morning, everyone. We're going to continue to talk about the derivative today, but to make things easier, we're going to start with some basic derivative rules. This is good news. This means we're not going to have to continue to do the formal definition where the limit of h goes to zero of the quotient rule, and we'll find some more efficient ways to find derivatives. Let's do a quick review of exponents. 1 over x to the n is x to the negative n. The nth root of x is equal to x to the 1 over n. When I multiply two exponents that have the same base, I add their exponents. So x to the n times x to the m will be x to the n plus m. When I divide exponents with the same base, I subtract the exponents. x to the n over x to the m is x to the n minus m. Then x to the n raised to the m is equal to x to the n times n. So when I raise an exponent to another power, I multiply the exponents together. Rewrite the following expressions. The first one says the square root of x. The square root of x, it isn't written that there's a 2 because it's understood, but let's rewrite it that way so we can see. So the 2, we call the index, that says I have x to the 1 over 2. So I can rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half. 3 divided by x to the 4th becomes 3x to the negative 4th power. Our first derivative rule is that the derivative of a constant is 0. So given f of x equals c, where c is a constant, f prime of x is equal to 0. Again, what we want to think in our heads is the derivative of a constant is 0. Let's think about what we're trying to do here. So derivatives want to know how a function is changing. If the function is constant, it doesn't change. So this is why we have a derivative that's 0. Maybe if we think about a practical example, it'll make more sense. So say our gym charges $25. So the cost is 25. Well, if I want to find the derivative, the derivative is going to be 0. The amount that the gym is charging isn't going to change from month to month. So when I get January, February, March, April, right, they're all the same. So when I look at how did my gym change, it didn't change at all in the fee that it was charging. The next one is the power rule, and the power rule is a big one. It's really important. We're going to use it all the time. So it starts as f of x equals x to the n. So we have a power. This n here is any kind of number. So it can be positive, it can be negative, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, it could be a square root if we wanted it to. When we take the derivative, f prime of x, we get n times x to the n minus 1. So what we're seeing here is I had x to the n. When I take the derivative, the n is going to come down. Once the n comes down, I still have x, but I have a new power of n minus 1. So I kind of feel like it's kind of circular that the n came down, it comes down, and then I subtract 1. So you want to get used to this rule. It's going to be super helpful. Let's look at a few examples. The first one, I have f of x is x to the fourth. The derivative, f prime of x, I bring the 4 down. And then I subtract 1, so 4 minus 1 is 3. Same thing, I have g of x is x to the 9th. g prime of x, I bring the 9 down, I subtract 1 from the exponent, now I have 8. Let's try a couple more. Here I have f of x is 1 over x squared. Before we do the derivative, we need to change this where f of x is written as a power, so we're going to write f of x is equal to x to the negative 2. So I want to rewrite the fraction as a negative exponent. Then I can take the derivative, f prime of x, the negative 2 comes down, I still have x, I subtract 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. It's fine to leave it this way, you might also see this expressed as negative 2 over x cubed. Then I have g of x is the square root of x, so let's again rewrite g of x is x to the 1 half. When I take the derivative, the 1 half goes down, I have x, a half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Again, this is fine, this does the power rule, I brought the power down, I subtracted 1, but you could also rewrite it a different way. You could put this negative 1 half power goes in the denominator, and because it's a 1 half, I know that's a square root, so I have the square root of x. 
Then this fraction, 1 over 2, the 1 was in the numerator, the 2 was in the denominator. So 1 half x to the negative 1 half is the same thing as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. You'll find throughout the semester and anytime you're looking at calculus that there's different notation that gets used. y equals f of x sometimes has f prime of x for the derivative. You could just have y prime. Other times you'll see dy dx, and other times you see d dx f of x. These are all ways to write the derivative. And sometimes you wonder, why do we have so many different ways to do the same thing? And it's because we had two different people that are really responsible for creating calculus. One of them you're probably familiar with already, which would be Isaac Newton. And the other one is a German mathematician named Leibniz. Continuing to add to the rules, we have the constant multiple rule. So it says if y equals f of x, which is k times u of x, where k is a real number and u of x is a function, then f prime of x is k times u prime of x. That seems like a lot, and it's really not that bad. It just says if we have a coefficient, we just leave the coefficient alone, and we do our derivative the way we did before. Look at an example. First one says f of x is 4 times x cubed. When I take the derivative, I leave the 4 alone, and then the x cubed, I bring the 3 down. I write the x, 3 minus 1 is 2. You can see 4 times 3 is 12x squared. The more you do this, the better you're going to get, and I don't think you're going to do this intermediate step where you leave the 4 and do the 3x squared. I think you're just going to go 3 times 4 is 12, and then drop the x down to x squared. That's absolutely fine. That's what I encourage you to do. There's no need to do extra work. So let's try that when we have y. So y, we're going to write y prime, 5x squared, 2 times 5 is 10, and then I have x. Now this x, the power is 1, because I did 2 minus 1 is 1. You don't have to write it. So if you want to write it, you can. If you don't, you can just write 10x. It's really more common just to write the 10x. Look at g of x. So g of x, I have 9x. Well, the x here is power 1. When you take the derivative, remember what the rule says. You do 9 times 1, which is 9, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. I'm going to write this the long way this time, 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is 1. We end up with 9. So all of this work just to say I have 9. What I like to think about is when we're doing derivatives, the power is decreasing, and it always decreases by 1. So if you go back to our first one, f of x, which was 4x cubed, the derivative was 12x squared. The power went from 3 to 2. y was 5x squared, and our answer was 10x. Our power went from 2 to 1. When I had g of x is 9x, my derivative is 9. The power went from 1 to 0. When it becomes 0, we don't write it anymore. Let's try a couple more. Here I have f of x is 7 over x to the 4th. Before I start, I'm going to rewrite this as 7x to the negative 4. Now I can write the derivative. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. I had negative 4. I subtract 1. That becomes negative 5. Again, your choice if you leave it as negative 28 times x to the negative 5, or if you write negative 28 over x to the 5th. The next one says y is 8 times the cube root of x. I'm going to write 8 x to the 1 third power. This is still y. When I look at y prime, I have a third times 8. That's 8 over 3. Then I write x. I have 1 third. I subtract 1. That gives me negative 2 thirds. You can leave it this way if you like, or if you want to rewrite it, think about you have a fraction. The negative two-thirds goes in the bottom. You could write it as two-thirds. We'll talk about what else you could do with it. Then the 8 over 3, 8 would go on top, 3 would go in the bottom. So you can kind of keep in place 8 numerator, 3 denominator, and do the same thing when you write y prime. If you don't like the two-thirds as the exponent, you can write 8 over 3. This 3 is the root, so I write the cube root. And then inside, I would have x squared. So lots of choices of how to write it. You can pick what works for you. I can follow any of them, so I'm not really picky as to which one you do. One more quick rule, the sum or difference rule. If y is f of x, is u of x plus or minus v of x, where u of x and v of x are functions, 
then the derivative of f is equal to the derivative of u plus the derivative of v. Again, it looks worse than it is when I'm looking at it as a rule mathematically. Let's do it and see what that really does. So let's start with f of x is 6x squared minus 10x. To do the derivative, I say f prime of x. 6x squared, the 2 times 6 gives me 12. The x was power 2, so I drop it down to power 1. Minus, remember, this 10x is 10x to the 1, so 1 times 10 is 10. I'm reducing the power of x, so I don't have an x anymore. My derivative is just 12x minus 10. Now let's look at y. y prime, I have 3x to the negative 4, so negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. I'm going to write my new exponent as negative 5. 2x, well, the 2x just becomes a 2. Remember, this is x to the power 1, so 1 times 2 is 2. The x goes away. This last term, 5, is a constant, and we said earlier that the derivative of a constant is 0, so it's completely gone. So my y prime is negative 12x to the negative 5 plus 2. We went over two basic rules, what happens for constants and what's the power rule. I threw in there in front of there some coefficients and added subtracted together. That was a lot, but we need to do a lot more. So I will say there will be more examples in the next video. I wanted to do a quick introduction to what our rules are, not make it too long, and then say come back and watch the next video and we'll do a lot more practice.